I have to wait for Bob. He must. We have to wait for Bob. Hold on. Is he out there talking to Tony? Yeah, he's out there talking to Tony. All right. Not on our time. And if you're interested, on a pole. Pine, but the pole? Did you mean pine or pole? Red pole, the gray one. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to the Tuesday, April 18th, 2023 Town of Monroe Planning Board meeting. Uh, I'd like to point out the fire exits. Uh, there are two immediately behind the audience. There's the main entrance where you come in and then there's another uh, in that direction out this door. Uh, with that, Noreen, would you please do the roll call? Bonnie Franson. Here. Jeff Manson. Here. Pat Shea. Here. Nick Napoli. Dylan Penn is absent, and Robert Garstack Here. will be filling in for Dylan Penn this evening. Thank you, and with that, let's all stand for the pledge. I pledge All right, first item on the agenda is a returning project, Henry Farms, if you'd come forward and give us a, um, indicate who you are and then a brief presentation of where we are in the process. Vince Peterzak. Uh, John Dahlgren from Tim Miller Associates. And John Gallucci, I'm here on behalf of Jake Myro wasn't able to be here this evening. I didn't catch your name, sir. John Gallucci. Thank you. And just since we only have one mic there, just remember that you have to speak into the one microphone. Thank you. All right, does someone want to give us an overview? I know you did a submission very recently. Yes, um, the submission was a detailed set of plans for the 70 lot subdivision. Um, it included all the details, uh, grading, um, erosion control. Um, we showed some of the items that were requested, um, such as the bulk tables for each lot. Um, we're showing the wetlands disturbances. We're showing the 15% uh, slopes on each lot. That's disturbed. Um, <coughs> we're showing um, the entrance details, the county road profiles, landscaping plans, and all the construction details along with uh, wetlands mitigation. Um, and all the drainage and site details. Basically, we're here tonight um, to run through the list of items that we had some questions and concerns and wanted to discuss with the board. Um, before we start, I just want to actually um, go to Ashley in terms of process because I know we had done a submission. We, we had requested to utilize certain consultants in our review. We still wanted to check whether these lots seem to be reasonable and I'm not sure at this point what the status is. So you had this matters involved in some litigation so there was that court stipulation with the town board where the applicant was to come before you, you were to have three months to give your initial comments and the scope of the review that you think would be required in order to complete seeker and what other consultants you would need. So you did that back in March, and recently the applicant, um, they've entered into another stipulation with the town. They had originally 30 days to advise whether they were okay with that, whether they wanted to proceed, or if they wanted to be restored to the court's trial calendar. So under the new stipulation, there's some new timelines that have been added. So they're here tonight on one of those to review and discuss your comment letter that you had given, things that they, you know, had wanted clarification on or if they're requesting some sort of modifications and then 
by May 1st, they're to respond in writing with any objections, additions, or proposed modifications to your original um, scope of review or the scoping documents as they've been along it. And then back uh, 11th, go over that. And then you have until June 1st to respond. They'll be on again on June 8th. And then by June 20th, I believe, you're supposed to give them a final scope of what the review is going to be. So you don't yet have confirmation that they're proceeding, so you haven't yet gone through and retained those additional consultants. They're still considering whether they want to proceed or not. Okay, so, I mean, we had some initial comments, but at this point, we haven't had any follow-up with regard, because there were some requests that were made, like field visit, other things, and that's kind of in limbo. I think they're here tonight to discuss I guess initial okay. feedback on the planning board's comments, is that? Yes, it, it's, it's a continuation of what's already been done because we have questions whether or not some of the things here are necessary and how extensive they have to be. Okay. So we wanna kinda refine that um, and find out if we have mutuality of agreement on that or if we have a disagreement, then there will be decisions to be made someplace, but we've, ex we've extended that time to make that decision in hopes of refining, you know, uh, the issues that are here. I think most of them have been pretty reasonable and that we can address them. There are certainly a couple of items that are going to come up that um, I think we just see differently. Okay. Uh, I don't expect them to be resolved here this evening. It may take time for... Uh, either Jay or myself, I would expect Jay, I'm deferring to him. He's obviously, you're more familiar, he's been here on this for years, um, to have discussions with attorneys about it. Um, one of the things in particular is, with respect to the scope of review, it goes back to the stipulation, and it's my understanding that, uh, and it appears, that part of this is that the interpret, the town's interpretation appears to be that the only thing that the applicant has is the bulk table, whereas our interpretation of the stipulation, and it's not, it's what it says, is that we're going to be heard under the laws um, from, that you're gonna review the matter based on the 70 units, which are part of a map that was submitted and attached to the stipulation, plus the one commercial, so that there's, I don't have any ability to make any change to that layout. That's what's been stipulated. That's what's been agreed. Yeah, I, so again, just to step back one minute here. So you wanted to go over some of the items that was in the scope. Did you submit anything in writing as far as a response or that's for the May meeting? There'll be something official submitted. We'll submit a, a Okay. We have not submitted a written response to that. There have okay. been additional submissions by the engineer okay. um, addressing some of those items. We're, okay. trying to, we're trying to accommodate as many of those as we can. Okay. But there are a couple of items as we go through it, and I think it'll be, I think it'll be easier. I'll point out the items as we go through them specifically um, that we think that there's a not even a disagreement, maybe a misinterpretation or, or a matter of interpretation. Okay. Um, and then real quick, do we have a copy of that stipulation, the second one, as a planning board? Because I don't recall seeing that. The only thing that does is give the extension of, I mean, I don't mean to step on your toes, really just giving the extension of times. Uh, it's the new time frames, but I will, I had gotten it, I, I believe from from Jay, so if you don't have it, I'll certainly, I'll forward that to you now. Thank you, yeah, and, and to CC Noreen, because I don't. I don't remember. There was yeah, no so, substantive change. Yeah, I wasn't even aware, I wasn't aware of the time frames. Right, I, so I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to procedurally remember what I wanted to discuss before we launch into the substance. Sure. Um, okay, so we have that open item as far as our requests additional reviews, et cetera. We have the stipulation, which has to do with time frames. Um, okay, I think, I think we can launch into what you'd like to discuss.
at a couple of things. Um, Uh, this gets to the this, this scope, and I think these things will, you know, over the next uh, month or so, we'll provide a, a written scope and, you know, comments to what's, what's been provided to us by the, the attorney. But there's a couple of things that, that we could probably discuss now and lay out on the table and, and get clarification on. Um, I think one of them has to do with the, the tree preservation law and uh, you know whether that, that applies and we're looking into that. I think that gets to the timing of when that, that came into effect and whether that applies to th this particular project. That is a specific item where I'm saying that it I, needs to be addressed. My understanding is that that tree preservation law didn't exist at the time that the initial approval was made, which I believe is um, April 14 of 2015. And if it wasn't in effect at that time, then we're not subject to it under the stipulation. So I think that's something that will have to be addressed between the attorneys. That's what I'm certain, saying. Yeah. I, uh, I'm presenting it here so you understand sure. where our issue is, if you will. Okay. And there, there are a couple of more like that, but that's... So, so, I'm, so here's the thing. I know that the zoning was passed back in 2017 or so, and um, you were subject to the moratorium, and then came out of the moratorium, there was no grandfathering at all, and so Henry Farm... Uh, essentially sued to be able to continue the process and, and with the approvals that were in place. So ultimately we have the stipulation of settlement. And I don't recall there being anything, I, I don't recall, I remember definitely the number of units, I recall definitely the bulk table, but I don't recall a lot as far as process and whether the applicant had to adhere to the other regulations that are in place, except for the units and the bulk standards. And so, now, in general, is that something that the town attorney is going to address, or how how will this evolve? If there's this, I think we'll have to stiff or what section of the stiff you. But are referring to when you say that it wouldn't apply? I'm, I'm referring, and I'll be glad to go over it with the attorney specifically, but so that it's in the open air here, if you will. Um, page six of the stipulation, there's a second paragraph on that, page six, and I'm just giving you the pertinent part of it, but um, it states that the town has considered the revisions. They're referring to the amended plan and the revisions that were on the amended plan, the 70 lots, if you will. The town has considered such revisions and shall review the proposed Henry Farms Realty Subdivision Plan under the zoning regulations in effect at the time of the adoption of the resolution based on the 70 unit proposal, except for the commercial lot located thereon. And on the first page of the stipulation, it specifically says that on April 14, 2015, petitioner received conditional approval from the Town of Monroe Planning Board, and that's referred to as, quote, the resolution. So when we're referring to the resolution here, it's referring to the April 14, 2015 conditional approval, and we're supposed to be reviewed under the zoning regulations in effect at that time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think the big issue that we have to address is the, the, the or one of the bigger issues is, is the wetlands. And uh, we, as indicated in uh, this, this draft scope, it requires us to, to relook at the wetlands, redelineate them, and, and that it's understood that they may have changed over time because it was quite a while ago when they were delineated. And how that affects, uh, you know, the whether they're bigger or smaller, um, and 
related to the wetlands. The, the previous approval had an Army Corps of Engineers uh, nationwide permit, which required uh, other studies, including a, a bog turtle study and uh, habitat analysis, including uh, bats. And uh, I guess our, our approach and uh, what we're thinking of is doing a, a habitat assessment because the habitat uh, on the property may have changed, wetlands may have gotten smaller or larger. Uh, we'll certainly uh, look at that, but the, 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 these studies came out of the, the requirement from the Army Corps. They specifically requested uh, these studies. So I think our intention is to go back to the Army Corps uh, and uh, New York State DEC um, and see, see what, what uh, requirements they have. And there may be additional species they're looking for. So uh, that, that's our approach right now. So my question is, and my recollection is that the planning board was not precluded from doing, or were they, additional seeker? Because the project has changed, and for the most part, it's a smaller footprint. So there should be fewer impacts. But in terms of habitat, we know, for instance, a northern long-eared bat got listed um, subsequent to when the approvals occurred. So we know that's a species. And, and, and wetlands change and habitats can change, et cetera. So my question, you're approaching it from a need for a permit from Army Corps. My question is, to what extent can we ask for this just from the perspective of SECRA? And that was one of the specific items you were to give those initial comments on, on what additional analyses for purposes of SECRA in order to get a consistency statement would be required so that that's one that would be within your, your purview. purview okay yeah because I want to be careful I don't want it to be that we're being we're being limited to simply what Army Corps says has to be studied I I think in terms of seeker we'd want to see an updated habitat assessment um, and obviously you have to um, confer with Army Corps as well anyway because they're a permitting authority but I just want to make sure that when we go through that habitat assessment that we understand what the protocol is going to be um, and that it's not simply you know a rare threatened endangered species look but that it's a, a reasonable habitat assessment of what might be there presently right, I think that's yeah, and, and I think if you all have, um, you want to put together an outline of what you propose and how you would go about the approach, I think we could take a look at it um, just so that in advance we're all on the same page and we're not later on saying, oh, you didn't look at this or you didn't right. look at that. I think it'd be good just to have some methodology. So we're, again, we're all on the same page and we're doing it as efficiently as possible. I think it will be helpful to have from I'm our like, side as yeah. to, you know, level of detail, uh, what we're looking for, uh, so that, you know, there's no misunderstanding going into this. Having said that, from my perspective, if you do have to coordinate with Army Corps, have you started that? Because they may even request things that, you know, would be beyond even what we might ask. So I'm just curious where you are in that process. I have reached out to the Army Corps and had a conversation with Brian Urzel. Okay. And we will be starting basically over from scratch. Okay. Redelineation, repermitting, and meeting all the requirements of that. Okay. Um, he said that we may be able to utilize the existing mitigation again, but it all depends on how the wetlands look at this time. Okay. That's why and if I anything's left changed. Okay. So we'll be seeing a delineation, so we'll be able to check it out. And yes. I suspect, is he going to come out, do you think, and check the flags? Or uh, most, likely most likely he is doing it on the other projects we have, even it, though it's been for some time. Was it an individual permit? Or uh, you didn't need just a PCN. You needed an individual permit with the mitigations, right? I believe it was a nationwide, but with would. mitigation. Okay, all right. So just in general, so everybody understands the discussion, the applicant needs, and an, they're going to be disturbing the federal wetlands that are located on the project site. So as a result, they need a permit. They always needed a permit. 
and as per your discussions, they have to update that. Part of that updating is habitat assessment and rare, threatened, endangered species, amphibians. Um, so it kind of dovetails into what we have to look at because we also have a wetland permit um, jurisdiction as well. So if the wetlands changed for Army Corps, it's going to have changed for us as well. So. Correct. And there are isolated wetlands on site also, so they would just be the town's wetlands, right. not federally regulated. Okay. So that's going to be remapped and delineated also. Oh, okay. And then we'd want to know if they're vernal pools or, again, that'll be picked up in, an, in the habitat assessment. Okay. I'll just briefly go over some of the other... Uh, categories like community services, fiscal analysis, cultural resources, air and noise, uh, we'll basically, our approach would be to look at what was uh, assessed in, in the original DEIS, FEIS and finding statement and use the finding statement as kind of a, a starting point for comparison as in terms of impacts and then update the information that obviously uh, Enrollment in the schools has probably changed, uh, things like that. And, and of course, the fiscal analysis will be different because there's different uh, units. So basically updating all that information. Okay. Do we know if this is going to be a um, community that's marketed to any particular group? Or if it's just going to be sold, market, any sense? And I'm, not sure. I, I'm like channeling Wade um, Ward Brower, <laughs> who would always say, you know, he would always say, you know, it's one thing to have a two and a half person household, it's another to have an eight person household. So in terms of planning for this community, is, has there been any marketing or concept or we, do we know anything about the households who are likely to live there? everything that's going on here, this is way too early to be even okay. considering marketing this. I mean, we still want yeah. to get the approval, and I think we're going ahead and expecting it's hopefully going to get expedited from the time that we've had in here already, but right. um, until we have a better sense of when that approval, and plus we know that we're going to be subject to sewer connections, so right. that connection could be years. So... There's no way to there's no way to address that question. Yeah. So so my only point is that since there is a seeker analysis, that we're not looking at the best case. That if the potential exists, that it's going to go to larger families, then that's that's built into whatever the wastewater is assumed, whatever the water is assumed, whatever information you may have on differences in household size. Typically, that's based on the bedroom count. Right. And this project has an agreement to limit the um, square footage of livable floor area. Right. As well as four bedrooms. I don't know if you want us to. Actually, I don't know. I don't know if we talked about this previously. As you're saying that, does a potential exist that they could do accessory apartments later on? Do you know? I know it's. It's 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 just something that I'm just. Have they thought about? The stipulation specifies 3,550 square feet exclusive of like basements and patios that I mean, I don't want to, of that type of thing, non habitable space, if you will. So a 3,500 square foot home, plus or minus, not including basements or garages, patio. So these are going to be really large homes. Uh, 3,550. To me, anyway. <laughs> I was going to say it's a matter of perspective. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. And, and again, just the point is household numbers, needs, you know, are they going to be, you know, if they're private roads, are buses going to go in there, et cetera, just have a sense of some assumptions with the population. Roads are going to be dedicated to the town. Okay. So there'll be public streets. Okay. Okay.
that's all I had in terms of uh, you know the issues I wanted to cover tonight. Thank you. Uh, I do want to point out this goes back to my initial discussion of the stipulation. Um, one of the items that really need clarification on is you've included in here a tree plan in accordance with the tree preservation law. Um, frankly, I did a quick search. I don't know when that was adopted. My understanding is it was adopted after April of uh, 2015. And if that's the case, then our position is that we're not subject to that. It's also my understanding that it, because of we're so far along in terms of having the road designed and the basic layout that um, it's kind of late in the game for that anyway because you've already determined where the road's going to go. And, and again, I'm, these are not me. I, this is my, I made, did some homework and did some research. That The purpose was to kind of help determine where you want to might move the road to or do something else and preserving some trees. Well, that's already been determined by the stipulated agreement as to where the road and how the lots are laid out. So that I'm not sure about. So I think that's a question we have because part of the discussion was whether or not there could be some adjustments to lotting or some adjustments to road because you essentially got rid of a, a pretty sizable part of the project and are there these, I'll call them tweaks, we're not talking about massive changes that would result in less wetland disturbance or less, you know, getting into steep slopes, et cetera. We're, we're, and not, we're not gonna go and change the lot configuration or change the road configuration. Part of the consideration when the stipulation was entered into was an analysis of the protect, projected cost to complete this approval process and also the cost going forward to develop it. And that was all taken into consideration when the applicant decided that they would enter into the stipulation. The, the roads are determined, the lots and the location are determined, and they're going to stay there. They're not going to, if, so if, 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 I would just if, say respectfully, I was, I was part of those stipulation discussions, et cetera. It's not my recollection that the roads and the lots were hard and fast, that the planning board did have some leeway but I will leave it to the attorneys to, to work out, you know, ultimately what, what was agreed to because I wasn't at the court. I wasn't at, you know, I wasn't sitting in the meetings, but that was my understanding. That's what I'm saying. That, that has to be determined in a, it, for us to determine going forward because if those things are going to occur, it changes the financial situation for the applicant and the considerations that were made. So if that's the town and the board's position, that's one reason I'm here is to get that answer. That answer. And I, I think that answer isn't gonna come from the planning board. I think that answer has to come from the attorneys and probably a discussion with the town board. But at least I can tell you my recollection was that there was some, some leeway for modifications. But and if, I, if I can too, so I think since You've been back before this board for the last few months. I know that's been something that was discussed. There really wasn't, um, you know, initially any any kind of pushback, whether there could be small changes to the lot layout, things like that, that the planning board has mentioned about better, um, less disturbance to the wetlands, things like that. If that's something that you're not, the applicant's shutting down completely, doesn't want to do, then I think that's something you just put in your, you know, response and you'll consider it accordingly. Right. But again, it wasn't, this board wasn't asking for any major changes. Any layouts or anything, consider yeah. Consider whether things to make a better plan for your client and, and for, for the town. For the people who are going to live there, ultimately, so. And I think we talked about a couple, of the, I mean, we gave examples of a couple of the lots and saying, well, you know, if we shifted this, could we get more of a backyard for that particular home that wouldn't be, you know, mostly wetland? So I recall those were some of the discussions, and maybe, I don't know if this is, is the same, and, and this would be a quest, question for Vince, is this the same as what we've been shown before, or were there some tweaks based on looking at it and saying, hey, we could probably you know, move this lot and get a little bit more usable land on the, on the, on the lot? This is the same. Okay. Um, we did look to see if we could 
there were adjustments. Sacrifice. Sorry, yeah, onto the mic. Go deeper into the slopes. Um, so this, in our opinion, is the best plan. Um, in addition, we had previously talked about redesigning stormwater to reduce the size of the ponding areas. Um, we're not proposing to do that either. We'd rather leave the ponds over-designed and leave the drainage. Okay. I want to mention that I did drop plans off to the highway super also. Okay. So that he had a set to review. Okay. Real quick also, just the set of plans that we have, um, they were, if I recall, in the bin last Wednesday. Okay. That's what I laid on your table and you said you already had one. Right. So last Wednesday was the 12th? Yeah. Okay. I'm off on Thursday. The only reason I say is because this is referencing April 7th. And so I just... No, I just had them move that, bit, that box into here for me today. Okay, but this was received on the 12th, not the 7th? It was received the end of last week. They called me and said there were plans up there, and then you came in from the meeting and said there were plans in the bin. I said, yes, they had called me earlier that day. Okay. So I just like the minutes to reflect that, we re that the town received these on the 12th. Okay. I don't know if you stamped them in as the 12th No, I not. forgot to bring the stamp up because I didn't take these downstairs. Okay, thanks. Sorry, that was an aside. That's what I was trying to remember earlier <laughs> in terms of process. Okay, um, clarified, you know, tonight, items, and sure, and, and we'll have to uh, prepare a written response, you know, laying these, these issues out, and uh, look forward to speaking to you with, at the next meeting. Anything else? We appreciate it. Thank you okay. for, for coming. Yes, thank you. So, so our, our May meeting then will get some kind of response as far as your position on the submission and, and what we've requested, and then we end up responding to that, I guess. Is that what will happen? We will submit a written reply. Okay. And then I expect we'll have... I'd have to go back and look at the stipulation. I, yeah, I don't the, have it in front of me, the time frames. The but. stipulation contemplates that you'll get a written reply by May 1st, and then they'll be on the May 11th work session for further discussion. And then the planning board is to respond by June 1, and then uh, they'll be back June 8th, and then you respond by June 20th with what you think should be the final scope. So some back and forth to, to see what that final scope is going to look like and some further discussions on that. And then June 20th is when you'll decide. So in the meantime, though, because I'm concerned that the applicant is going to argue that we're not reviewing the project now that this full submission is made. So should the engineer should, we're kind of tied because we haven't been told we can retain the consultants we normally would to do the review. So how do we process this if that hasn't happened yet? I guess we're, we're, we're still back to where we were before. All we did was extend the time to make a determination whether or not the applicant's going to go forward or not. This was to get some input that will assist us in, in determining how far and what they have to do. I wanted to bring to the board the issue with respect to um, <laughs> the zoning code and the items that I've presented before, that that's what we're subject to. Um, as I say, I don't expect an answer this evening, but I wanted it out there. That will be presented in our written reply. I expect that they'll, I would anticipate that there will be further discussion about that at the subsequent meetings, and that there will come a time when the board comes to us and says yes or no to our comments, and then at that point, we will have 30 days to make a determination whether or not we wish to proceed 
with the application and whatnot, or if we're going to return to court. Okay. Just I, to clarify one item on that. I, so I know you mentioned the tree wall. Was there any other zoning that you think you wouldn't be? Yeah, I was going to ask that. Are you then arguing, like, what are you subject to then? We're subject to the zoning code as it was on April 14 of 2015. 2015. Correct. So uh, just prior to when the new zoning was put into place. Yeah. Okay. The date of the approval, that, that, that's what I was referring to on the stipulation. So if there were, for, for example, I don't think there were, but for example, if there were other tree regulations that were in place in 2015, you would be subject to that in theory. And in theory, we would have, ad, we would have, ad, we would have, ad, we would have addressed it at that time. Yeah, I don't know because you got approval way back when, <laughs> and the approvals were being extended for a significant time period. So I'm just not sure what actually existed in 2015 and whether, in fact, you were being asked to make any changes if there were changes to the law. But I don't know what the answer is. I just don't know. And yeah. I'm trying to get the timeline of what we are, our, our what well, you're, I'm saying the stipulation says that at the time of the approval, which was August 14 of 2015, okay. it's supposed to be reviewed based on the zoning laws as of that time. Okay. What those zoning laws are, does I, that, I don't know. Does it say zoning and subdivision or is it so land use regulations? So in, in one of the, the whereas clause, which explains the, you know, what um, the underlying matter is, it talks about the zoning regulations in effect at the time of adoption. When you go to what's actually agreed to, and again, this is just off the cuff here, so I think we, of course, will need to look into this further. It specifically says that the lot areas, setbacks, and other bulk conditions, as well as any special permit regulations applying to each building lot shown on the amended subdivision plan are hereby deemed conforming to bulk requirements to be applied to the application to the extent a variance would otherwise be required under current zoning. So I think I we think have to look into whether, you know, what the, was intended. that is meant to say we're going back and pulling out the old zoning book and just Yeah, because I don't recall there, or, Yeah. I don't recall that being the case. But that's I, why I wanted to just also make it clear, whichever, you know, if there's another in addition, you know, the tree law you had mentioned, is there something else in the planning board's comments that you're, you know, objecting to from a zoning perspective. I don't know from about a zoning perspective, but um, we feel the stipulation takes care of the layout configuration, the road layout, and the proposed lot configuration that's presented. Right. I mean, I'm guessing that's the case because you've submitted a fully engineered set of plans based on that layout, whereas we're still, I feel like, behind the eight ball because we haven't really even started reviewing the plan. So... Yes, that gets back to your question, and I think it's really, you know, we'd ask the, the applicant to advise what they want in this regard as far as engineering review. Should the engineer be reviewing this, um, or do you want to wait for that true substantive review until you finish going over, you know, your response to these comments and decide whether yeah. you're going forward or not. Just understanding that there's going to be then additional costs incurred and if you end, you know, I don't want at the yeah. same time the board to not be reviewing the, the plan that you have before them. So if you could clarify that it should be reviewed yes, before you. Yes, we would like you. the new plan reviewed. Okay, because we... Well, so that's the thing. I mean, we're stuck because what you're not, the applicant isn't, as I understand it, the applicant isn't going to reimburse our consultants unless they agree that those consultants can be involved in the review. You're, the additional consultants that you haven't retained it, you're outside, ecological, those other consultants, that's, that's right. correct. Right. So it doesn't include our own in-house consultants. That's uh, not, yeah, my understanding, because they do, I believe, have an escrow now to be before you. Yeah, I but I guess then it really comes down to the scope of primarily the the engineering review. So, may, may I? Su 
whether they, they want, you know, Sean's yeah. office to review these plans or if they want to wait to see if they're going to be agreeable to the final scope before you start that engineering review with the understanding that that's going to then... Yeah, because um, I, I don't want us to get the blame for delay. No, of course. Right, so we received this on the date that I indicated, and I think your group should be explicit whether you're allowing and you're you're going to allow our en at least our engineer and our attorney to review this plan that was submitted. Okay. <laughs> okay. That needs to be repeated on the mic, please. It's not working. It's yet the little light has to turn red for it to be on. Is it maybe? Did someone hit the mute button on the panel? Is, is there it, a red light on If the there's panel? a red light, that means on the mute. How's that? There, there we're better. good. No, I'm, no, we're not authorizing this to be reviewed by the engineer at this time. Okay. We're still here scoping out the degree and what is expected. Okay. Anticipating what the cost, and you've given us some of that. Okay. We're at that stage to determine whether we're going to proceed or if we're going to opt out and proceed in another manner. Okay. This, to be perfectly clear, our position is this stipulation has laid out what the layout and the configuration is, and that's the 70 lots with the one commercial lot. That doesn't require the engineer to do anything. That if the town or the planning board or whomever is going to say, no, that is subject to us reviewing and modifying it, that's what I'm asking. Um, this, no, you have to understand, this is a different layout. This is a different project, even though it's smaller, it's, di it's different. So how could our engineers not review something? You're saying this layout's agreed to. This layout hasn't been reviewed by the town. Stipulation is that the 70 lots and the one commercial lot shown on the amended plan is deemed, deemed in compliance. So there is no change in that layout. I so I think that there's some, there, it's twofold here. So there's one from a standpoint of the configuration itself and that, you know, the layout and that you, you don't want to consider any tweaks to that. That's one thing. The second is, of course, with any plan, the engineer has to review stormwater, has to review the engineering, grading, things like that. So we're trying to understand and just confirm that that shouldn't be done until you are, until we have this final scope that's been accepted by you. Is that? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And just the modification of drainage with respect to the lots that are put on that, that's different. But with respect to the layout, no, there's not going to be any change to the layout. Any board members, do you have any comments that you'd like to add before the applicant? Um... No comment. I do have a couple of questions, if that's all right. Sure. Um, I didn't have an extensive amount of time to review what's been submitted recently, but I did take some look at it. The one, so the one thing I want to understand is the bulk table that's presented at the top right of the cover page, that, that was set as not based on what necessarily the zoning was at the time, but that was agreed to as part of the stipulation. It's, it's really custom zoning for this project. Or, or are we really just looking at something that is being uh, held to a previous standard? I'm, I'm, I'm unclear on that. The project was a cluster project. So when a project starts and is going to go into a cluster, you arrive at a yield. Right. And then you downsize that yield um, to smaller lot sizes, trying to reduce impacts. Um, this bulk was arrived at for during that cluster process. So it wasn't part of the court agreement. This was part of the approval process. The original already. one, it, correct. It yes. was a It was the decision was that we're going to do this as a cluster. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that part I get. Um, the court agreement says that those bulk apply. It, it what was what was agreed upon and approved upon? Yeah. The court has said. In terms of the bulk. In terms of the bulk. And there's an interpretation as to how far the court went in terms of that. Right. But did I understand correctly, in, in talking about, in terms of uh, the issues with the wetlands, at least as far as what was delineated previously, that part of the reason why you're 
you came up with the layout that you did was it was a mitigation of disturbing wetlands versus steep slopes. I, I saw, I, I took a quick look at the grading on some of these lots and there's a fair amount of um, uh, working the, the properties, flat spaces into, into what's existing slopes. Yes, you're kind of trying to balance everything out. Okay. To get it to fit in. And I took a quick look at the zoning map and now I'm seeing it in front of me. So currently, there's two different, the property is on two different zoning uh, things, SR20 and uh, RR1. If, if it was, if you were coming to me today, I'd be looking at this under two things. We're not, because we're looking at the bulk table as was agreed upon and stipulated, but is that correct? Is it, is it actually in two different zones? I haven't looked at any of the current zoning maps, so okay. I don't know. Right. They, they had looked at the zone maps because at some point during the whole discussion, I think, of yield, during, I think, the court proceedings, right, you, you were trying to figure out what the yield would be based on the new zoning. Yeah, Mark, right? Mark from Mark Seamers in my office was handling that, so I don't recall okay. what the outcomes were of that. And I know that along Lakes Road, there's uh, existing well one, existing well two. I'm just wondering if you had any uh, historical information on why, what the wells served previously. Th those wells are going to continue to be used under this proposal, correct? And I'm just wondering, you know, how long have they been there? What, you know, what was on the property previously that these wells were serving, if anything? I don't know. We'll have to... And yes, the wells. I believe they were drilled for this project uh, years ago. Oh, okay. And, and tested and, and mm -hmm. pump tested and so forth. As part of that. Yes. Okay. Uh, this was vacant land, and it's my understanding that the, those were wells, drills, wells drilled by my clients, in anticipation of going forward with this application and and the water service that was going to be required but it was there was there were no wells there was nothing used on this site previously it's always been vacant land to my knowledge and and a quick review of the lot by lot comparison down on the bottom of that front page it didn't look like generally speaking uh, there was anything there were any lots that weren't going to be in compliance with the bulk table that was agreed upon there's nothing where we're, we're saying well this is a bulk table we agreed upon but this lot is going to need a waiver of this, or this lot might need a waiver of that. That's correct. And almost as a point of curiosity, there, there's a notation about lot 49 that the side yard, um, I guess the combined side yard, isn't applicable because it's on a corner lot. So are both, are both um, parts of the property on each of the roads being treated as uh, front lots? Is, is that why the, um, the shape of the building envelope is what it is? There, there's, a, there's what might be considered a side uh, lot where the entrance road is across from the retention pond, but it looks like that's a bigger uh, setback, and I'm just wondering if you're treating both the one on the main loop and the entrance road, if you're treating those as, I, I think the bulk table calls for 50 yards in the, in the front. I'm going to have to look into that and get back to you to verify. Well, mostly a point of curiosity, but that's just the way it looked to me. I'm good. So, so this is where we get into the whole question of grandfathering and what the stipulation says, because this project is not in the RR15 and the SR20. This project is in the RR1 and the RR3 zoning district, and that's why the yield came down. Um, when it was calculated by Mark, um, because what's allowed now is less than what was allowed then, and the stipulation was maybe somewhere in the middle, let's, let's say. So, so the question is, as far as this presentation, you know, there's a general note, parcel is okay in the R1.5 and, and SR20 zoning district. Should it remain that way, or should it instead acknowledge what the existing zoning is and say, but this is subject to a stipulation of settlement and therefore, you know, these are our bulk requirements and these are our, um, uh, you know, 
you know, this is our layout. So I don't know the answer to that, and I think that's where part of the confusion is. I didn't, I didn't understand the question. Well, the question is, how is this subdivision presented? And it goes to that question of whether this presumes that this is entirely subject to what existed in 2015, or whether the stipulation says that you're entitled to certain improvements here, but we still acknowledge the re existing reality, which for example, these are in different zoning districts. So how is that subdivision, the notes, et cetera, how, are the, how do we address that in our review? And I think that... The notes say that they're in the R, R1.5 and SR20, is that... Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that is the note that's on this map because I suspect what happened was you just pulled off whatever is not happening <laughs> and whatever is left is what the applicant is arguing they're entitled to. Plus that in addition to arguing that they're, they are subject to the zoning as it existed in 2015, which those would have been the zoning districts. In pre, I'll say pre-2017, because I think that's when the zoning was adopted, I believe in November 2017. Well, right now they're in different... They're in different zoning. So what are they in now? They're, they're in the, you could see here, this is the property right here. Do you see where my cursor is? The darkish yellow and the light yellow, that's your property, right? So... That corresponds to the OSR3, the three-acre zone, and the RR1, the one-acre zone. So really just the impact of the, the bulk requirements. Well, so had they been subject to the new zoning, it would have impacted everything, including yield. So when the stipulation, when there was the back and forth, I think Mark calculated, let's say for argument's sake, you know, 23 as an example, 23 lots. And they had original approval for more like 150 or so? 65 single family and 50 multis. 65, was, does that include the seniors too? Yeah, that was the 50 multis. Okay, so the 50 multis, the 65, and then the commercial building. So that's where the stipulation has come into because the yield is somewhere in the middle. It's not what they were approved for, but it's not what the zoning would theoretically yield at this point. And, and I think you did some calculations, not like you laid it out. You just said, I think Mark had said, well, there's this amount of wetlands and this amount of steep slopes, et cetera, because we also have our net lot area requirements in place as well. So that affected the yield. Yes, and as far as the, the yield itself, I mean, that is clear that the 70 is right. agreed to and the, the bulk that applies regardless of what zone it's in. I do think that for clarity purposes, I think probably referring to unless the, the stipulation deems them in another zone to, you know, clarify or update whatever their current zoning is, knowing that whatever that bulk table is that's on the plan that's been agreed to is the applicable bulk. So, And so... So I think that's the back, I think that's why it needs to be understood. I think the applicant is, is arguing that it's almost as if 2017 didn't happen. And so does it go as far as even to suggest they're, they're subject to as if the SR20 and the R1.5 is still in place. So they don't have to change anything. So that, this is like a, a pretty fundamental question that has to get resolved because this has to reflect whatever is ultimately agreed to in terms of how we show all this information on a plat. So, but I guess you'll make your arguments and then we'll, we'll have to review it. And I think it would be helpful if, uh, again, I know you had mentioned the trio, if there's other things in the new zoning that you think shouldn't, you know, apply just so I guess the, the board understands what it is, you know, what uh, of the current zoning that you're saying shouldn't apply or? I'm, I'm saying this application, if it goes forward, is to be reviewed under the zoning code in existence on 
April 14 of 2015. That means the putting the whatever. actual district, so they'd be as if they were in the prior zoning districts. Bulk and the number of lots has already been. I, agreed I, I'd to. said that right. already. I know. But whatever whatever the zoning code was on April 14 of 2015 is what this application is supposed to be reviewed under. That's what I'm saying. As a total aside, the zoning had already changed to change the zoning to, th I believe, three acres on that property. But under a local law, when the three acre zoning was passed, I believe that your project was grandfathered back then too. So it's the histories, I think, a little more complicated in terms of what existed in 2015, because what existed in 2015 also may not have been this zoning, but I think you were grandfathered, so because you had already, I think you had prepared an EIS. I remember this because I remember going through this when we were working on the zoning once upon a time. You know something? Exactly what's being brought up here is the reason we wanted this conversation <laughs> so that we resolve that issue yeah. before we start going into the nuts and bolts of getting a final approval. Right. Uh, I don't think we have any disagreement as to what has to be determined so that we're both talking about the same thing. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for for that clarification. How are we going, how are we going to get to that clarification? Um, I think your point's well taken. As you know, I wasn't here for the whole history, so your knowledge of that is far, far superior to mine, which is none, all right? Um, it makes sense to me that probably some portion was grandfathered in. Um, I was part of the stipulation. I know the discussions that were going, going on during that negotiation. I know what the general belief and understanding was, and I, I'm not going to state that here. I don't think it would be fair because you don't have the other people that were present. Um, but I know what our understanding was, all right? And that, that needs to be resolved so that you and we can go forward in an intelligent way and not get down in the mud of, of, of stuff that frankly just will cause confusion. I want clarity, I don't want the confusion. Um, so it needs to be brought up here and I'm asking for the assistance of you or council if need be, that there is a discussion with whomever, the town or the other village attorney, so that we finalize what the spirit and intent of this stipulation was. Um, we all know, you know, words are there, but there is an overall belief and, and, and intent when you enter into this. Um, we're trying to comply with the spirit of that. There are things that were put in the plan that Vince submitted that, frankly, I don't think we really had to, but they weren't onerous for us to do. So we would rather present them and put them in than raise an issue about that. The tree, that is something that can be very costly to us and that would impact. Um, some of the other items become a financial impact that is gonna have to be inputted for the applicant to decide what decision they're gonna make going forward or how they're gonna go forward. Um, so we need that clarification. I just don't really know that we can do it here in this forum or whether it's you or Ms. Torre, how do, we, how do we go and have that discussion? I've presented what the issues are. Now we need to, to focus on them um, regardless of what the decision is or regardless of the position of the town or us, let's find out what they are, you know, draw the proverbial line in the sand, this is your position, this is our position, and we can either resolve them or we come to an agreement as to what they are, or there's another don't. form we have to do. Right, but let's find out what it is so that when we're finally here and going through the process of getting a final approval, you're not 
put into that morass of mess. Let's eliminate it ahead of time. That's really what I'm here to do. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so we appreciate this. I mean, the reality is we're hearing this for the first time in terms of your position. So, and, and seeing these plans and how they're laid out, it then raises the question, it's raising the questions of, okay, are we putting the new zoning districts? Is it the old zoning districts? And again, going back to, to what extent is this grandfathered? Um, so I think we'll have to discuss this offline. And, um, but in terms of the stipulation, the next step I believe is for the applicant to submit something to us that asks for or, or that documents your position, I guess. Yes. Yeah, and yes. then we'll have to go forward. Pat, did you have anything you wanted to add to this? No, I think we beat it to death. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Rob, did we also beat this to death? <laughs> Do you have any comments or questions? No, I have no questions, but I agree that I think that we need to figure out how to get this absolutely clarified. Okay, anything else? Um, I just want to recognize our uh, Conservation Commission. Did you have a, a question or comment? <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, Got to be on the mic or we can. Right. He's going to have to. I'm is sorry. that one working? Let's see if this one's working. Hold on a second. Can you? No, no. No, no, no. So that I don't have to bend over, right? Okay. Yeah, Dennis Fordham, Conservation Commission. Um, obviously, our concern is for the preservation of the environment. Uh, it seems that in terms of wetland, uh, uh, f fauna at least are being addressed and will be addressed going forward with further considerations on the wetland and so on. Obviously concerned about the impacts on, on trees. Um, I can't speak to the fact whether the current tree code was in force in 2015 or not. Uh, the, the point is, I think, it, it, wouldn't it be good if there was a general intent to, to at least try and conform to uh, more current uh, tree preservation requirements that have changed over the last few years, regardless of the town's tree code. Um, but one thing we could do, and I don't know whether the current plans, do they have a tree plan, do they have a landscape plan which indicates the impacts on the existing trees and uh, maybe installation of new trees? Does that exist now? Um, on those plans? They, they would have only provided whatever probably was required by the subdivision regulations. So, for example, if the subdivision regulations required street trees, that might have been there. If your prior seeker process required that certain stands of trees be preserved, that would have to be um, shown. But it flows, I believe, from, well, this is, the, this is what we're trying to get at we don't know how much change can be exactly. made. I appreciate that. And, yeah. and so, you know, there's a question as to what we can require to be an analyzed as part Absolutely. of a new seeker process. Or, again, whether, in fact, they're even subject to the tree law. So while we all would agree that consideration of trees and preservation, especially something that's a heritage tree or, a, you know, significant stands would be important. We just don't know to what extent we have authority to I've, I've, require I've, certain uh, things because of, because of yeah, the legalities and the yeah. settlement of a case. Absolutely. Uh, have any of you visited the site in recent times? Uh, I've been by been it, but that was one of the things we wanted to do was a site visit, and yes. that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that, that would be one thing. I mean, maybe what's proposed for the trees now is, is okay. Maybe the trees that are there now are no big deal. We don't know. Um, so I, I at least would like to be in on a site visit just to, to look at this. And then at least we, with regard to, to whether the, the current law applies or not, at least to know uh, what the, the impacts are and what, what we uh, have to accept. And that, so I think I don't think that's unreasonable. Um, don't wish to stand in the way of progress. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and just one other aside comment. Um, I, I, I'm the new ward, but Brower is. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, well, I I've started to call <laughs> Wade for some <laughs> odd reason. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Yes. Dennis. Ooh, careful. Like a novel. <laughs> One must have to take downstairs. All right. Anything else then? We're good? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, next item on the agenda will be DG management. Come on up, state your names for the record, and why you're here. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. John Queen from Lank and Tully Engineering. Also here with Lipa Deutsch, the applicant for the project. We're before you tonight to um, there was a draft resolution for final approval circulated by, by Ashley. Um, we, we initially thought that we were going to go through that and finalize, which I still think we can do tonight. Um, however, we were, we were made aware of some additional correspondence that was received by a neighboring municipality, again. Um, and I'm not sure how the board would like to address that, but that's... That's where we're at at this point. Um, so I guess the question is, how should we proceed at this point? I know that, uh, and maybe Ashley, you can give an overview of some of the back and forth that occurred because the planning board isn't necessarily aware of what's transpired in terms of village comments, specifically related to drainage. Um, and where things stand, because it was a combination of raising questions about the drainage, but then there was a question about Seeker, so. Yes, so there, you might recall that the preliminary approval of resolution, one of the conditions was for the applicant to get various outside agency approvals, and there was a question as to what type of approval, if any, was needed from the village of Monroe, and in particular with respect to some drainage and it's now been raised that the drainage flow to the seepage pits that are going to that this project will connect to hadn't been analyzed under seeker for that that pr other subdivision that they'd be connecting into and after talking with with sean today we think it'd be appropriate to update your your seeker and analyze that um john Queenan had said he could provide some some figures on those issues that the board can then consider and cross that T and dot that I. Well, we don't agree. We believe that the drainage that was presented to the board is completely adequate. Um, the engineer who did the design within the village did calculations for those seepage pits. Testing was done for those seepage pits. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the drainage has already been installed in the village. So, are the sea, so help us to understand this. Were the seepage pits shown on that subdivision plan that was approved and filed in the village? And you provided to that planning board calculations, information? I'm not involved with it. So I don't know what was provided to the village. Oh, who was the engineer doing it's, that? Uh, so, Larry Turo? Yeah, Civil Tech. So okay. Larry, I had a conversation with Larry. He said that he did go out and do tests probably about a year ago, maybe a little less. They did perk them. They do work. He did do a supplemental analysis, I believe, that was submitted to the village. And I think the, village, the village's stand-in engineering consultant reviewed those um, as part of that. All right, so Larry, Civil Tech, they can submit whatever information or evidence we need for right. that so analysis. What, what I, I spoke with, with Ashley uh, this afternoon. So what I'll do is I'm going to get Larry's information. We'll package it together, make it a supplemental drainage report, and submit that to the, to the board's consideration. Okay, so the only thing that you stated which gives me pause is when was the two lot subdivision approved 
Do you recall? Twenty or because I remember app, I think, we was filed we, in twenty twenty. Yeah, we started DG management, but you had the road going out that other direction, that other yeah, part of the a, site. Yes, yeah, we had a lot then of you went and got the other approval in the village so that you could come more directly from the site. This applicant is not associated with the village's applicant. So they're two they're two separate projects. Um, they're not they're not combined projects. No, understood they're not combined, yeah. but when they created that So they they there was a subdivision before the village planning board and they were open about the fact that there was a proposal before this board in the town and it's in the minutes of the planning board that we provided that said that this road could be extended in the future depending on what was occurring on our property on DG's application. Okay. And that's how the village came to the design that they approved which was the half the temporary cul-de-sac. Okay. I was just trying to see if I had that map. The village signed it uh, 2020, October 2020. So is this the sole map that got filed? Oh, you're up there. This is what I have as a file map. It's signed here, map. If, I think if, if, as long as it's, what's the date on that one? Four pages? Yeah, October, it should be October 5th signed. Okay, so it's four pages. Yeah, and then there are the seepage bits at the bottom of the. Right in here. Uh, yep, correct. Okay, so what were those seepage pits for? That's their drainage. That's for them, for their drainage. That's Correct. not for your drainage. Well, our <laughs> drainage, the way the drainage works is we're draining onto them already. It's pre-development conditions. And so part of the drainage, they have, they have to incorporate what was coming to that location. When we come along, we're only allowed to discharge what was previously there, pre versus post. That was the drainage study. So we're not sending any more to that location than it was already been sent there. And they've already taken that into account because it's the same drainage area. And we had several alternatives that we walked through. And so it was, it was determined that the best thing to do was to pipe it and connect them rather than for us to detain it and then let it go back to sheet flow for it to recollect again and end up at the same point. So this was analyzed as a separate subdivision and the seepage pits were specifically for the two lot subdivision and this new well, that was their road. that's their design right exactly that's the design right. for the two lots and that but subdivision. their design takes into account more area that's draining to that location because they did some watershed analysis Correct. and determine how much Correct. is contributing so there they may have like two acres but they might have a watershed of like uh, I don't know the numbers but say five okay which would include portions of our property. So this seepage pit, only because I think you said Larry had done this a year or so ago and the timing got through me because this was approved more than one year ago. It was approved and then they went to go build it. The village had concerns. and I believe the standing consultant wanted testing done, so they completed the testing. Okay, so that was done subsequent to this yes, map. Correct. So it's already been done. All right. So I guess at this, and again, I'm trying to understand the relationship of this still to the drainage. So at this point, from your perspective, they handled their drainage, you handled your drainage. Um, and so the only thing we need to do is you're gonna provide us with that additional information so that we can incorporate it into the secret documents. Okay. And Ashley, you're in agreement, and Quinn? Okay. So board members, do you have any questions, comments? No? So we're going to do an amended neg deck when that's updated. Okay. Pat, anything? No questions. No. Rob? Okay. So For purposes of tonight, um, it would be appropriate to extend the preliminary approval because I believe you had last extended it in February for 60 days. So I'd say another 
60 just to be safe, but you'll be on May. That should, you know, the information sounds like you have it already, so. Um, motion to extend the conditional preliminary approval. If you get this into us earlier, I mean, is there, what's, what are your time frames? What are you trying to achieve? I know, you, I know you'd like it now, but, yeah, so but is, there, I'm, I'm, is there anything pressing where a special meeting would be beneficial? Of course, I mean, it's, <laughs> well, let's get you the information first. Yeah, get us information, yeah, and, and then, then we can, I can consult with the board yeah. and see whether they would be willing to have any kind of special meeting if, I figured if it's we'll, necessary. Yeah, we'll get you the information, you know, obviously the, the consultants will review, and then we'll come to okay. the conclusion. Okay. Yeah, I'm, at this point, I just want to resolve this so that we can move on. Okay. Uh, is it possible just to go through the, the draft? Just in, oh, sure. Just so we can. Well, so let's, um, do we first want to do the resolution to extend the approval, just to do that? Preliminary condition approval. Uh, what does that take us to? What date? Or should we make it to a meeting date that's somewhere? Yeah, let's do it to a meeting date. Does the 13th, does that go beyond the 60? May the 31. I would say to do either to June 8th or June 20th, you could just do it for a, to a date certain. Your code allows reasonable extension, so you're not bound by that. 60 oh. day period. Okay, so we could say to the 13th? Or you're saying go beyond? Or if you want to do June 13th. Or June. I don't believe that's a meeting night. Second, I'm sorry. Uh, third Tuesday would be the 20th. Yes, 20th? Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, I will make a motion that we extend preliminary subdivision plan approval for DG management to June 20th, 2023. May I have a second? Second. Noreen? Nick Napoli? Aye. Jeff Manson? Aye. Bonnie Franson? Aye. Pat Shea? Aye. Aye. I forgot who was there, Robert <laughs> Garstack, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we did that. So let's go through the... So everybody's received this, and obviously we'll get some additional time to review it. So perhaps, John, did you um, have any particular items you wanted? Um. Yes, just, uh, it, it's fairly identical to the preliminary one, except now we've checked the boxes. But, right. Uh, just one real comment from our end, uh, page 11, number eight. Page 11, number eight. This one? I an older one. This is 413. <sighs> Hold on. Let me see if I save these. March visuals. Yeah, please do. just downloaded these. It's making me crazy. Uh, 
put it in here. Was it the um, Monroe or the other? Okay. That one? Okay. So if possible, we'd like it, we'd like it so that prior to issuance, instead of a building permit, it would be CO for the drainage. So. But what it's doing is it's saying that prior to issuance of any building permit, all of the permitting, the infrastructure, everything has to be installed. So that we wouldn't even be able to start construction on like it to say, prior editions of a CO, the improvements will have to be installed. Just like when we're dealing with the road for the subdivision, it's the same thing. You can still get building permits issued while you're building the, the infrastructure. Did um, Sean have any opinion on this? Uh, so Sean had no exception, or took no exception to this. Okay. So we, we, um, we have approval from DOT already for this work, and the Village of Monroe did grant approval as well for the design of this work. So it's just a matter of... So you're going to, though, work diligently to get the approvals, right? We have them. Now we, now we actually have to go get the permit. You can't get the permit without a contractor, without bonds insurance, et cetera. We so have, you, you have the DOT approval? Yes. Okay. Yes. As well as the Village of Monroe's approval. And so when do you do the permitting? Like when would you actually start that? Normally perm permitting you're having is a week before you start the work. You cannot have it before. So what, what the road that? opening is only issued a week before. Yes. So. So the DOT, um, when they have selected a contractor to do the work, you then supply the paperwork to DOT. It's a one-page application, but also goes with the required insurance requirements and the contractor's bond for the work. That's when you apply for the permit. Okay. I'm just trying to see if this could be tied to something, maybe not C of O, but something later. So, for instance, evidence of submitting the permit, you know, something that would show that you're working toward it. After we won't get it. <laughs> right. So that's that. something early. You meant yeah, yeah. In other words, something. So not I guess when would you get the? So I know this says that they'd be installed before the building permit, but would you have the, the actual uh, permit before the building permit, and then the installation would be before the CO or? I, I would leave it that everything would be permitted, installed prior to any issuance of any CO. I mean, that's, that's really the goal here. There's no point for us not to get COs. So we put all this work in, we're going to get COs, so they're going to have to finish this piece. We could think about, you know, if there's, if yeah, let me want some way to, you know, diligently pursue the permit or whatever. Yeah, we could we'll, think, about we'll that. think of some language. So typically, I have not seen resolutions where they don't get the permit, you know, prior to sometimes even filing. But this is DOT. Thing, with a DOT permit, they won't, that's the, the confusing part with DOT is they will give you a letter of approval. They'll say, your plans are approved, subject to the issuance of a highway work permit. Right. You can't get a highway work permit unless you are ready to build it because the highway work permit requires you to have the, a contractor in place, requires you to have bonds and money and insurance to be submitted before the DOT will, will actually give you, you the, the permit. permit. Right. So if, 
if we're here without signed plans, we don't have a contract there, we're not going to be putting up money to do improvements on a plan that's not so, moving. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, is there a way, so when we say building permit, Ben doesn't expect, when he, when he thinks of a building permit, does he expect that there's a building permit to start the road, to start clearing, et cetera? Or are you thinking building permit for a dwelling? The latter. For a dwelling? But that could be. Specified. Because from my perspective, to start the road improvements, to start the construction, et cetera, you know, that's all okay. I think it's just more a question of should foundations and houses, you know, be constructed before there's more nope. movement toward a work per toward getting a permit. Always are. Constantly. Usually you'll go in and you'll rough the road in and then you'll start applying for house building permits while you're doing the utilities. That's all occurring at the same time. So how many houses are you doing this on spec or are you going to build them all at once? You don't oh. know. Well, I, I can tell you generally you come in with a model so they're going to they're going to want one right off the bat to get up and showing while they're still constructing. So I, you know, this is not uncommon to me that yeah. You know. Well, let's I think let's talk about it. I'm just not sure. The first dwelling. Yeah, the first or yeah, that you you get a building permit for the first dwelling or a certain number, but beyond the that dwelling, you have yeah. to have because in theory, you could have built a house there anyway. In other words, if this was never subdivided, you could pull a building permit for one, like one house. house. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah so that's what I'm saying. One is one thing. Going beyond that, I, don't, I think we just I think I just need to understand the process a little more as far well, as I don't understand what the tying them to it. Hesitancy is it's 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 just like the it's like the road improvements that we're doing. You know, the map will get signed, then the contractor selected. He's posting a bond with the town. He's posting inf inspection fees, and the work the work commences. It's, it's all part of the same package. Understood. I'm just more accustomed to someone getting the work permit, so I think I would feel more comfortable talking to Sean. That's all. To ask Sean, is this the normal process? Yeah, I, well, because I don't think fine. we've approved anything before where we've let a lot of construction go before a DOT permit is required. So I just. I haven't seen it, so I, that's my only thing. So if, if Sean says, well, Sean kind of did say it's okay. It's not unusual. It's not unusual. All right. Well, let's, well we're not going to act on it tonight, so that, we'll, we'll consider that, that was change. My only, that's my only comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Board members, did you have other comments at this point? No? All right. So you'll get us the drainage information. Yes. We'll process it, review it, and then figure out timing-wise if there's something we can do or, depending on timing, if we, we go to May. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is Mountain View Shul. Good evening, John Queen Kelly, also here with Mr. Isaac Walter, the applicant for the, the Mountain View Shul. Um, when we were last before you, the, the board had uh, closed the public hearing and had authorized the draft negative declaration and final approval resolution. We did submit revised plans and revised landscaping plan addressing the prior comments. Uh, so I think we're back before you tonight for a review of the, the negative declaration and the draft approval resolution. So was this one 412? Okay. <laughs> so let's bring up the neg deck first. All right. So this is a negative declaration, meaning uh, 
planning board is ultimately making a finding that the project will not have a significant adverse environmental impact and a draft environmental impact statement will not be prepared. The action is construction approval of the Mountain View Community Shul. Today's date, this was an unlisted action. Description of the action. Uh, Brightview Management is the applicant. Do we have the owner here somewhere? Do you normally put owner on them? I don't believe it's on the neck deck. You have it on the, okay. So Brightview Management seeks approval of a site plan special use permit to construct a 5,952 square foot place of worship, synagogue and mikvah, with uh, additional parking and access drives on an approximately 1.552 acre parcel, currently, impro currently improved with a synagogue, um, which will be used for accessory storage, and then a single family residence, which will remain. And we'll go into all that. Location 277 Mountain View Drive. We reviewed the part two, short EAF. And then here's an evaluation of those items where we determined that the magnitude warranted an explanation. Impact on land use, change of use or intensity of use. There is one correction I had on page two, okay. the second paragraph. Okay. So this, the second line, it says that the project may contain northern long-eared bat. That should be the project site. Okay. I would just say that's almost not impact on land use, but that's like impact on flora and fauna. Yeah, it's under there as well. This was kind of just a summary. Oh, so it's an addition. Stormwater, impact on community character. Impact on water supply, wastewater treatment facilities. Uh, potable water. So that on um, second line? Okay. Act on historic and archaeological. And uh, State Historic Preservation Office came back and indicated um, there were no concerns. Okay, impact on flora and fauna. And this is also project site. Run drainage runoff and flooding. Did not require a SWIP. That on-site collection system? One, two, three, four, five, six line. Okay. Uh, anything else the planning board believes needs to be addressed in this negative declaration? No? No? Uh, would someone make a motion that we approve this negative declaration? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Noreen? Napoli? Aye. Jeff Manson? Aye. Bonnie Franson? Aye. Pat Shea? Aye. Robert Garsack? All right, so next item on the agenda is the special permit resolution. In the next check, just note that's a Brightview Management. This one's Brightview Management Inc. So I don't know if you want to make the neg deck also Inc. Okay.
Okay. So this resolution is for the approval of a site plan and issuance of a special use permit to allow the property um, to operate as a place of worship. And again, the same narrative description is included in this approval resolution as was in the negative declaration. This is on Mountain View Drive. Do you know what the address is? 277? Let me just add the address. Uh, this is in the SR10 zoning district. Located at 277? Yeah. At. And this was the information that was submitted in support of the application. Was dropped off, I think. We updated the facade um, and the lighting details on the building that was requested. Okay. So. Is that covered in the conditions? Yeah. So you can drop those off with us, but we'll look at it as part of the conditions. Fine, it just changes the date of the of the one plan set, that's all. I'd prefer to leave it this way because we haven't reviewed it. Okay. And then... Sometimes, so in resolutions I've prepared, I'll put amended site plan identified as follows, as may be modified um, by... There's that footnote. Oh, you have that? <laughs> um, the footnote at the last revision date says that the plan set oh, there is we to go. be updated. So I'm going to actually add that same footnote after the facade, number seven, number facade seven. design details. Okay. So that'll say that the, um, the facade design details may be updated so, per the engineer. Okay. Which the conditions allow... So we will say this: the plan set may be updated to reflect m something to the effect of meeting the conditions of the approval. Sometimes we put something general, not just as authorized by the planning board engineer, but to satisfy the conditions of the approval. We can figure that out. Application was filed May 27, 2021. Public hearing was convened January 17, 2023. This is an unlisted action. Uh, we've been acting as a lead agency. Uh, we established our status as lead agency September 8, 2022. And we circulated notice of intent. Um, we did issue a negative declaration this evening. This was referred to uh, Orange County Planning Department for GML 239M review. And we reviewed the report. Were they recommendations or modifications? Subject to binding comments, okay. Recommendations contained within comment requirements. One, require no further action as the project is within Orange County Sewer District number one, is not subject to allocation of sewer under the 78 Moon Nut Intermunicipal Agreement. Recommenda recommendations contained within comment two have been incorporated. We received correspondence from um, Curious Joel that it is currently supplying water to the property and it will continue to do so. Recommendation contained within comment three have been incorporated, revise the lighting plan. And so I assume these are some of the changes you were making. Okay. All right, planning department's report also contained advisory comments. Municipal sewer connection from Orange County Department of Works. We did review this to the village of Curious Joel. We didn't get comments, right? 
I don't recall any. Um, findings, we make our regular findings. Approval of the site plan special permit will substantially serve the public convenience, safety, and welfare. It will not be detrimental to the neighborhood or the neighbors thereof. And that approval of this place of worship will not adversely affect adjoining properties and general surrounding neighborhood. It's taken into consideration expressed intent of the zoning chapter. General public health, safety, and welfare, and prescribe the appropriate conditions and safeguards. And these are various findings with regard to the special use permit that we're making, with regard to parking, vehicle, pedestrian, bicycle circulation, design of the special use, the utilities, visual scenic historic character, architecture, landscaping. Then we make findings for the worship special use permit, and some of them did require waivers. Okay, so the proposed floor area ratio is 0.39, which exceeds the maximum FAR of 0.25 under town code 5713Q1. Applicant has requested a waiver from this requirement. This is used as a place of worship with an existing FAR of 0.3, and the applicant seeks the increased FAR in order to for this in order to serve the needs of the congregation providing appropriate space to conduct services and religious uses within the building. Planning Board finds that the maximum 0.25 FAR requirement would place a significant burden on the religious exercise of a person, religious assembly or institution hereby waives this condition to allow an FAR of 0.3 now, 0.39. Ani? Yes. Just, I'm sorry, did that point? Can, can you just scroll back up a little? Yep. So the resolution states it's an existing FAR 0 0.30, and I'm looking on the cover page of the plans and um, in the bulk table there, and it's saying, so we're requesting uh, 0.39, but there's a comment 0 0.30 without existing. So is it 0.9? Is the existing point nine or is the existing point three zero? Thank you. I mean, it would just seem it's a more significant increase compared to the existing FAR with what's being proposed. Because they have the house and then they have the place the, the, of worship. Which are going to continue to be there. So I mean, I, I get, I get that that's going to be part of that. Yeah. No, I'm just trying right. to think of what the increase is than the FAR. The existing FAR is 0.14. That's the synagogue and the rabbi's house, and it's going to go to 0.39. So existing FAR 0.14. Good catch, Jeff. Only because it's in front of my face. <laughs> I think the without existing is if you didn't include the existing shul again. Got it. So like you're not double dipping. Right. Okay. Right. So we're taking the house in both scenarios, and then we're taking out the existing shul, and we're putting in the new shul. And so it, we included all of it in the point mm -hmm. three nine. The point three is without the old shul, I'll say. And then what it is today is point one four. Oh, okay. So, but what doesn't change is that the maximum FAR is point two five, which is allowable. And you're going to point three nine, which is a point one four increase, right? Correct. All right, let me go through these and then we'll go, we'll talk about the waivers. Or should we talk about the waivers as we go along? Probably easier to do that. Anybody have issue with this waiver for the floor area ratio? No? No. 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 Any issue with All right, next item. Proposed development coverage is 54%, which exceeds the maximum of 45%. Again, another waiver has been requested. Um, development coverage of 29%. Does, since you have it in front of you, Jeff, does that look? I'm sorry. What? The 29% <laughs> development coverage, are you seeing that in the chart? 
Mm. I, that's not no. in the chart. Prior to what's provided. Okay. Oh, okay. You don't have the existing. Yeah, I didn't okay. the existing. Got it. Taken from their narrative. narrative. The narrative? Okay. Which includes existing shul building, single family dwelling that serves as a rabbi's residence, seeks to increase coverage in order to provide for needs of the congregation. Maximum coverage could be increased to 50%, which reduces the size of the coverage waiver required to 4%. So in essence, given that we have the ability to waive the net is 4%. Anybody have an issue with this change in impervious coverage that goes to 54% instead of 50? No. No, I, I think the narrative kind of, um, I think the combination of the narrative and the architecturals that were provided sort of explain um, what the congregation's need is and how they're going to appropriately meet that need, it, it seems reasonable. Number four, all structures and parking are screened from adjacent properties other than the property to the west by evergreen plantings. The sufficient height and diameter to substantially eliminate noise and traffic. Width of the planting screen is? Five feet. <laughs> That's what exists forward. I know. That's what exists with the original shul. So there's an evergreen planting road that goes up the driveway. So we're just going to continue that up on the west the property. Up. So about five feet. Okay. Yes. Which is less than 25 required in the town code. Again, a waiver's been requested. Uh, applicant seeks a waiver because the existing shul did not require such screening at the time it was approved, and the majority available area to accomplish such plantings has already been developed. Planning board finds that the requirements for screening along the west side and for a minimum planting screen weed of 25 feet would place a significant burden on the religious exercise of a person, religious assembly or institution. Planning board hereby waives this condition. So while I don't have an issue, is the waiver only grantable because of the significant burden? Or are we allowed to waive special permits as a general rule? As a general rule, you are, you are, but for this specific special permit, it has this waiver standard in it. Because I guess my question is, I don't see requiring screening to place a substantial burden, but I don't have an issue with the waiver, given the site, how it's already developed, where it abuts the village of Curious Joel, they weren't even looking for interconnections. They weren't interested in anything. So, so I don't have an issue with the waiver, but I don't know that I would tie it to the religious burden aspect. So, for instance, I can see with development coverage, if you need the parking, if you need a particular size building, you know, for the FAR, that's, that's dealing with their operation. I feel like the screening really, it wasn't necessarily, would providing 25 feet affect something that deals with the operation? So if you could explain that, because I think we need to tease yeah, that I mean, out. If we had to have a 25 foot planting buffer, we would not have parking, we wouldn't have the access drive going around, and we'd probably be impacting the size of the building. Including on the west side? Okay. Yeah. Requiring such buffer would reduce the available parking, um, access drives, possibly the, the building itself and it's, location of it's, the building yeah it's 20 yeah i think it'd be right on the building wall so maybe added to the sentence here and minimum planting applicant has requested a waiver from these requirements for screening along the west side of the property minimum planting screen with as and then the, the reasons will be set forth there the next sentence is the applicant seeks the waiver because the not require such screening at the time it was approved and the majority of the available area to accomplish its planting has already been developed 
or is to be developed in order to have sufficient parking access drives? Parking access drives and building area? Fill in five again. Is everybody okay with this waiver? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. All parking is screened by evergreen or other uh, coniferous trees, no less than two and a half inches in diameter breast height, minimum planting height is six feet, which tree shall be maintained at all times. I like to put for the life of the use. Can we put that in there? At all times for the life of the use? I want to put that in. That okay. You may have actually had it as a note, but I don't recall, so we'll do it as a condition. Yes, it is in there. Okay. Planning board determined required number of parking spaces. Contains 105 seats, which requires 35 parking spaces. Additional two parking spaces are required, and 37 parking spaces are proposed in compliance with that. Place of worship does not maintain frontage on a major collector. And this has been, a, this is a requested waiver. It already exists. So, um, everybody okay with that waiver? Yes. 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 Okay. Structures will be in harmony with the surrounding neighborhood. No parking loading is permitted between the structure and the street line. Pro structure is not a single family detached dwelling, although there is one present on the property. Will comply with applicable sections of the New York State Uniform Code. Um, we have waived the conditions set forth as we had described previously. This a uh, Didn't we just go because of property number 13? So that's discussed because it was referenced up when you were discussing the general coverage waiver, but the provision that actually talks about your ability to raise it, that 20%, that's item number 13 of okay. the reg, so that's why it's discussed again there. Okay. Planning board is further determined, exercising its powers of architecture review, that the exterior design arrangement, texture and materials, appropriate and visually compatible with existing buildings. And this will not involve the removal of any trees. But there are no necessary public improvements. And then resolution of approval, specific conditions, subject to final engineering review of the plan set. Number one, I was going to add end facade design details after plan set, and then also the date of Sean's memo should be April 18th. Okay. Um, applicant shall comply with all outstanding comments of the planning board's landscape architect. And will not be signed until receipt of a letter from the planning board landscape architect that those have been addressed. Prior to signing of the plans, facade design details shall be revised to reflect that the proposed lighting would be downlit, uh, not to exceed a 2700 Kelvin. Use of the existing shul building as storage shall be limited to storage that is accessory to the new shul. Prior to signing of the plans, label on the existing shul be revised to state existing shul building remain and be used as accessory storage. This approval, condition on review and approval of sewer improvements and connections. I'm on five. Sure. Basically, it's the similar situation. It says that the plans will not be signed until uh, we get the permits from the county and the DEC. Probably about a year long process and we couldn't start those until we got our NIG deck. So I would request that the board consider uh, making that final CO. Is 
say that again? Right now, the, the way it's written, it's that um, the plans won't get signed to start any work until we secure sewer permits. Sewer permits from the county and the state have to go to both agencies. It takes about a year. They won't accept the applications until a negative declaration was completed, which we did tonight. So we're going to be working with them in parallel for probably a year to secure those permits. But at the same time, the congregation would like to start, start their site work and start on their building, which time frame for construction? The way, the way uh, how we're building the building is we're building it slowly and we're fundraising as we're building. So people the, see that the, we're building, so they give us money. So we'd like to ask the board if we can make a condition that the building department shall not give us a CO till we have a uh, sewer. And of course, we're building at our, our own risk. We're taking a risk um, because we're building, we don't have sewer. But to wait now till we're getting a permit, it's a year plus to get from the county the permit. So you have the shul there now? Yes. Yes. No bathrooms, no? No mikvah, which is a religious thing, and people are upsetting because we can't do it's what? Septic. It's on septic. OK, so, so from a practical perspective, it's going to take you time to fundraise and build the new building. You're going to continue to use the existing building, or is that the storage area? Will you use that as? As we're building, we're going to use that that you're, storage. So you're going to continue to use. You're going to continue to use the shul. We can yeah. continue to use until the until you're uh, able to yes. occupy the other. Yes. Okay. And we, ha we have it. We have it designed that neither building interferes with one another. Okay. So the access drive goes between the two that already pretty much exists. So they'll be building on the one side of the access drive and the existing shul will remain on the other. Okay. Now I was just, I was trying to understand in, in allowing this change how the site will actually be functioning. It'll function as it does today. Yeah. Essentially, they, but they'll be constructing the, the shul. Okay. Um, anybody have comments on the, on this waiver or the change? And we would have started, but they won't accept the applications without the NAGDEC. Any issues? Any concerns? No. No? Quinn? Ashley? So the, so the idea is that they're going to provide those approvals um, before C of O? Is that what the request is? Well, we'll have to provide the approvals as well as construct, construct it. So it'll, you know, we can't get sewer service without putting in the sewer. And then we can't get a CO without having the sewer. Yeah, no, but <laughs> so I'm, trying like to, I'm trying to figure out when. I would say that, that the plans, I, I wouldn't so even So you don't want them for plan signing, no. but it has to be done prior to a C of O. Correct. And installed. Yeah. So basically, we have to get a permit and have it installed prior to getting a CO. Certificate of occupancy shall not be issued until such written approval. Has to be installed. So this last item is coming out, the last sentence? Or modified? It's not the plans, it's that a C of O shall not be issued. of occupancy will not be issued until such a written approval satisfactory to the planning board engineer is submitted to the building department and the sewer improvement. I would, you could say that a, a C of O shall not be issued for the building until all sewer permits and, and improvements have been obtained and constructed. Or the sewer improvements. Correct. Are received. All sewer improvements should say have been approved. All. All permits and approvals for the permit connection are received and said improvements have been installed to the satisfaction of the engineer? 
or the building inspector. Out of Monroe Department. Probably because Ben will rely on Sean, right? And say a certificate of occupancy for the proposed school shall not be issued until all sewer improvements have been approved and installed to the satisfaction of the building department. So all permits and approvals for, what did you say? The sewer department. The sewer. Oops. Improvements connections are received and said improvements have been installed to the satisfaction of the Town of Mineral Building Department. Something to that effect. <laughs> Maybe some wordsmithing. comes out. Number six. Now this says that you have to have your agreement in place prior to the signing of the plans. Same. This I think we should have. This we have because now. Th we this have isn't now. this doesn't rely on another No, eight. but we have the letter from the from the village already indicating that they do not have an objection to continuing to supply water and future supplying water to the proposed plan. Yes, all you need is an agreement then reflecting that commitment. So then whether it's an amended agreement, I think there does there should be something what this board typically requires when you have an outside water um, user arrangement that it's filed with the county. So I think the issue that they're raising that it not, not be it, that it be done at a point after the signing of the plans, but we normally require it prior to the signing of the plans. That's been very consistent. Do your best. <laughs> prior to issuance of a building permit, applicants should provide the building department with written approval from the village of Curious Joel of the design and engineering plans for the proposed water extension. At the same is on the plan they didn't yeah I think if there's no if there's didn't. nothing different then yeah okay we just want to know that the village of curious Joel signs off on a letter from them saying that they've reviewed the plan dated such and such and yeah they, okay I think that's fine no tree removal is proposed or authorized by this approval in the event it's necessary you must obtain all requisite approvals and comply with the DEC tree removals restriction and it'll be included as a note in the plan sheets. All landscaping shall be maintained in a healthy, vibrant condition at all times for the duration of the use. There it is. To provide visual screening of the building and parking shall be replaced if damaged or otherwise destroyed so as, so as to inhibit their screening so as not to inhibit. There'll be a not there. I th would add the plantings shall be replaced in kind. Any substitutions shall require planning board approval. Um, I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure that they come back without installing something different. Okay. Uh, place of worship must comply at all times with applicable sections of uniform code. Owner or tenant of the existing single family residence on the property must reside on site at all times. Uh, 
prior to the issuance of a C of O, proof that the existing on-site wall casing has been abandoned in accordance with AWWA standards. For the owner or the tenant of the existing single family resident of the property must reside at all times. Can we some, say something that buildings shall only be used as a single family residence unless site plan approval? or a site plan amendment and something to that effect. Exactly does that's not vacated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like 24 7 yeah <laughs> <That's> <laughs> they can like, never leave that's it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to stay there the retirement <laughs> you'll, you'll put the wording in but you know what we're achieving for 11 right I just want to make sure it stays single family and suddenly doesn't become something other than without them coming back to us since parking and everything else is, you know, assuming that use in the same way we said something about the storage. Prior to the CFO, okay, we went over that. All exterior lighting shall utilize energy efficient LED bulbs, dark sky compliant, fully shielded, not exceed 2700 Kelvin. Thirteen and fourteen probably could be merged because one says dark sky compliant, another one says comply with International Dark Sky Association, which is sort of the same. So maybe thirteen and fourteen in the final you could merge. Prior sounding of the plans, lighting plans should be revised to include a lighting curfew. Gate shown on the roof is for design purposes only. No roof deck or use of the roof for any activities is permitted by this resolution. I, if I Back to 15? Yeah. Lighting curfew? Um, not sure exactly what you're looking for in terms of that. Uh, talking with Isaac, the shul gets used pretty regularly to 11 p.m., except for you know the high holiday seasons. But we could put um, timers on them so that after 11, certain lights would, would dim down. So I just don't know how you want coming, to. Yeah, this came from the Orange County comment that the lighting plan shall be revised to include a lighting curfew that reduces lighting levels when the area being illuminated is not in use, or that's how we propose to incorporate it. On, on the plan and on the lighting plan, um, I can specify a note that basically that the lights should be on timers and that after, you know, typically 11 p.m., they will dim. Security lighting. Well, lighting curfew that reduces lighting levels, so it will always be lit. Well, yeah, I mean they're using, it, so it'll be lit. Like after eleven p.m., it's still going to be lit. No, certain lights will have to stay on just for they don't want the whole property to be dark, so there'll be certain lights that be on. I'm just wondering which, are we talking about the actual synagogue lights or? I'm talking about the parking lights. The parking lights, okay. Yeah, the, the site pole lights. I don't know if the county's comments were specific to any particular lights or just they're talking generally about all lights. The applicant has proposed light poles for the perimeter of the project site. We recommend the following. The lighting plan shall incorporate a lighting curfew that reduces lighting levels when the area being illuminated is not in use. So I guess my question was, what are you putting on timers? So I took it as they were talking about the perimeter parking lot lighting, so those would be on timers. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they were talking about that or the building. Like they thought maybe they were high up, so. The lighting plan for the building. They building, say building? 
the building doesn't, the building lighting doesn't really add, I mean, it's lit, but it doesn't add to the site per se. It's just, it's more accent architectural lighting. They said the building? If say, it first reads the applicant has proposed light poles for the perimeter of the project site, we recommend the following measures. A, lighting shall be directed only where needed. B, all exterior lights utilize energy efficient LED. C, all on-site fixtures shall comply with the International Dark Sky Association standards. And D, the lighting plan for the building shall incorporate a lighting curfew that reduces lighting levels when the area being illuminated is not in use. Both. I'd okay. It can dim the building if there's no one using it. Okay. Um, perimeter and the perimeter and the building lighting would be dimmed or extinguished. That's kind of a given. We, can we do 11.30 just to make sure now that we're dimming the building, we, everybody can be vacated. Also on high holidays, that'll be longer duration. Are they on all night or is it a couple hours? High holidays. It's, are they praying at 3 a.m.? <laughs> so when do you, when do you think is reasonable cut off? A little, you want to say 1230? For high holidays, just give you more time? Okay. Got that, Ashley? A note shall be added to the plan stating that the perimeter and building lights will be on timers and dimmed or extinguished after 11.30 p.m. On high holidays, the timers may be extended to 12.30 a.m. On high holy holidays, on right? High or holy. high? However you want to. Okay. I would say high holy holidays. So except on <laughs> high holy holidays when the timers may be extended until 12.30 a.m. Okay. Okay, gate shown on the roof is for design purposes. Approval relies upon the drainage study, other evaluations. No building permit for structure larger will be issued, et cetera. No disturbance to lot of permit beyond that shown on the approved site plan. No CFO shall be issued until all improvements in landscaping is completed. Narrative is limit of use. So you're limited to what you stated you would be doing in your March 9th, 2022 narrative, and the approval incorporates uh, the narrative by reference. Outdoor fixtures and amenities allows only construction of what is shown. We add including but not limited to lighting somewhere in there besides exterior walls, mechanical units, dumpsters, et cetera. In number 21. After dumpsters, I'll... Lighting, yeah. And general conditions, submission of the plans, all other approvals, these are general conditions. All fees and expenses, Completed entity disclosure statement. Site plan is binding. No changes are allowed. Changes from the approved plan requires resubmission reapproval. And it's effective for a period of two years from the date this resolution is adopted, notwithstanding any extension granted. Special use permit shall be deemed to have expired if construction is not completed and a C of O issued within 180 days, 180 days of the date of issuance. Extension of such authorization may, may be granted by the planning for not more than two additional 90-day periods. So 
If this is being done a little at a time, that may be problematic. So you might just want to think about what you may need to do. Yeah, that's... that's well, that's if con yeah, if construction is not completed. That's the language? It's not, not started, it's completed, I guess so. Tough, even if you started tomorrow, six months would be. That, remi that might require some a waiver or something down the line. Yeah, if that's the way it's written, uh, it just, yeah. it seems very, very tight. You got six months plus an additional, so you get up to 99, so it's a year. That a year after you start construction, you should be completed. Uh, and then nine. <laughs> See you then. All right. Any discussion with regard to this resolution? Anything that wasn't captured or needs to be revised or thoughts? Members? Oh. No? no. No. All right. Uh, would someone please make a motion that we approve this resolution of approval for site plan special use permit for Brightview Management Inc., otherwise known as Mountain View Community Shul, um, as the resolution has been amended this evening? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Noreen? Nick Napoli? Aye. Jeff Manson? Aye. Bonnie Franz? Aye. Aye. Bob Gorzak. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. For Thank you. Handing. You can leave those with uh, Noreen. Yeah, we'll hand those out. Thank you. All right. So we have a cutoff of 819. <laughs> So we'll be seeing you. <laughs> come. <laughs> All right, come on, come on up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's do this, and then we could do Pilates. No one, because uh, Mike. No, he's not coming tonight. Yeah, Mike isn't coming, but we're still taking that up this evening, so. To be. Okay. Good evening. For Good the evening. For the record, my name is David Kenny. I'm an attorney with Snyder and Snyder here tonight to represent the applicants Homeland Towers and Verizon Wireless. And Vincent Xavier, regional manager for Homeland Towers. Uh, we're here tonight. Obviously, we met at the last work session. I believe it was decided that um, the monopine structure would be the structure uh, that would be moving forward. Uh, we're here tonight, hopefully, to receive a negative declaration so we can go back to the zoning board uh, and continue their review. Um, so we have received the FEAF part two and part three as well as um, a negative declaration. Do you want us to run through the FEAF part two or part three or should we go to the neg dec resolution? I want to look through it quickly briefly so I addressed anything in the part two that was either listed as moderate to large or uh, small impact in the neg deck but so the arrows there denote when it's small versus um, no impact so the arrows denote say it again that's when it's a, so if you go down, so number one, for example, yep. 1A, so I checked the box for no or small, but because it's, you can't say small, there's no separate box, I put the arrow there to mean that it's small versus no. All right, so if anybody has any comments. Was this blurry to begin with when it got? I scanned it at home, so I think my scanning <laughs> is a little, I have a better copy I could, I'll send around. Uh. I just want to make sure it's not <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> All right, if anybody has it, I'm going to scroll through this, so if anybody has any comments or 
disagrees with the checkbox that it should be changed, please say something. Impact on geological features, according to this, none. Impact on surface water, no. Impact on groundwater, no. Impact on flooding. Impact on air. Impact on plants and animals is a yes. Impact on agricultural resources, no, there aren't any. Impact on aesthetic resources. Any of these are large or moderate to large. Impact on historic and archaeological resources, none. Impact on open space and recreation. Impact on critical environmental areas. There. Impact on transportation. It doesn't, it's not a regular traffic generator. Impact on energy. So we say yes, but there's not an arrow. Yeah, but they were all no under the standards there so the overall question was yes but then when you look at the subparts I, th I would suggest we just put in other impacts because it looks odd to me to say yes and then not have anything so I would just say um, project will increase demand for energy from what's using the energy there the the, yeah, it's the base units. Yeah, it's base units on the full power. Uh, for a, a full tower, like full build out, full capacity, if they had all the co locators on there and they were operating at max power, which is these aren't conditions that are likely to occur, but worst case scenario. I think we've done it on most applications. It's around four to five homes is an average, uh, the same energy that uh, four to five homes would use. Yeah, the question is just any increase. So, yeah, yeah, so the overall sure. question for number 14, and I apologize for the blurriness. Um, was whether or not it may cause an increase in the use of energy. So you answer that yes, and then when you go to the subparts, the first is whether it'll require a new or an upgrade to an existing substation, no. Whether it'll require um, energy for 50 single or two family homes, no. Whether it'll use more than 2,500 megawatt hours per year, no. And whether it'll involve um, heating or cooling more than 100,000 square feet, so that would be Right, so I understand those are all no. What, when I check yeses often, what I do is just put under other impacts. Um, that 
slight increase in energy demand for the facility. I mean, it, yeah. that's really all it is. Just, and it'll, st it'll still be small to no, but there'll be an arrow there. Or is everybody okay with that? Yeah. It just then it kind of helps explain why the yes is checked, even though I understand what you're saying, Ashley, that it doesn't fit in the first four, but it's just generally as an impact, it will demand energy. So it'll have increased energy usage. Under. <laughs> you were you had some suggested language. Uh, the only thing I suggested earlier was just the slight increase in energy demand. We were just skipping ahead to the next one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, because it's going to be continual use, so there'll be... Right, yeah, yeah. The, we will use power. Right. Okay, impact on noise, odor, and light. May produce sound above noise levels established by local regulations. No blasting. No routine odors. So there may result in light shining onto joining properties, although that was evaluated. Impact on human health, that's a no. Isn't anything hazardous, not solid waste, et cetera. Uh, okay, consistency with the community plans, yes. So moderate to large is the fact that it's different from or in sharp contrast and that it's inconsistent with zoning, which is why you're getting a use variance. I think the rest of that's okay. Consistency with community character. So the proposed project is inconsistent with existing community character. That's a yes. And the items that were highlighted as moderate to large are inconsistent with predominant architectural scale and character of the existing natural landscape. Okay, everybody in agreement with those items? Yes? Yes? Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Uh, do I need to open up the part three? Part three really just says deck, so. Okay. It does reference in the additional materials on the second page, um, the visual analysis or visual assessments. Okay. Since those were really key to your review. That's just something, and I'll send clear versions of the final forms for you to sign tonight. <laughs> okay. All right, so then we can move on to the neg deck. All right. Um, again, the proposal is that we will issue this negative declaration um, that the project would not have a significant adverse impact and a DEIS will not be prepared. The action is for Homeland Towers LLC and Verizon Wireless site plan application. Un unlisted action. Is there any benefit, so that it's for the site plan application, I guess we don't have to say anything about the use variance. Or is I think that it elsewhere? does say it in the description. Okay, yeah, it's in the description, not it in the It says it in the description, and, and the only thing I would name is that, I'm not sure if this is really important, but the name of the action, you call it the site plan application. This is a, um, a coordinated review, so the action is not just the site plan action. It, this the secret would actually be for the facility itself. So it, it could be just instead of site plan application, wireless facility. I just, I don't want it to appear that it's limiting to not a coordinated review. Wireless tele and, and the Verizon wireless and that one, it, it, wireless is part of their name, but yeah, you can leave it as telecommunications facility, that'll work. Yeah, this is perfectly fine. And then you just want generally to gen 
generically to say application? Yes, absolutely. The description of action, line three, well, it's con just a little before that, consisting of a 100-foot monopole designed to resemble a tree, monopine. Would it not, I think it would be a 100-foot pole designed to resemble a tree? I, because we, it, we've been talking about the option of monopine or monopole, yeah. and we're not choosing monopole. Let's just call it a, a facility. Call it a tower. Let's call it a tower. Tower, tower. tower. yeah. Technically, it is a monopole, the type of tower, and it's being designed into this monopine, but right. use tower if that helps. That's fine. Okay, requires a use variance. And location 2426 Strauss Lane, and the tax parcels provided. We reviewed the part two, impact on land. I'm just gonna scroll slowly through this. Impacts on plants and animals. Next, impact on aesthetic resources. Are there two submissions or three submissions? So what we had done, it was there's two balloon tests that we did and two reports. We gave you before we submitted that March 30th report, like the previews of it, when we, as soon as we had them. But we never gave official submission. We brought them to the meetings and just showed you. Okay. So the March 30th includes all of those different photo sims that we presented. They were included in that report. Just should we say final design? Final design of the monopole shall occur as part of final site plan review. Is that okay to say? Um, at the end of the aesthetic resources, somewhere monopine designed to further camouflage reducibility for the public to notice facility. Impacts on aesthetics have been mitigated to the greatest extent practical. Such final design shall be reviewed and approved as part of the final site plan approval. Yeah. Impact on noise, odor, and light.
consistency with community plans. And it also deals with the RPO. Consistency with community character. That's it. Anything to add or that the planning board wants to discuss? No? Are you good? I just have a question about the lighting. Uh, what kind of lighting really is at the facility? And I, I mean, is that only used really for nighttime repairs or is the exactly. site lit up at all? No, on a regular basis? Not at all. It's a maintenance light. So it's basically for a work te technician when they come on site, if it's in during uh, low light hours, um, so that they have light for their, for their work. It's uh, with a timer so that it's not going to be used if they're not there on site, and it's not going to be used um, if they leave the site so that the timer automatically turns it off. Are those installed to the bottom of the tower or the equipment itself in the whatever cabinetry it's mounted exactly. in? It's, okay. it's closer to the equipment cabinets. So okay. it's not installed on the tower. It's really where their ground equipment is, where the equipment cabinets are. Thank you. Do we have a pole mounted lighting fixture or is it just Do you mean like attached a, to the building or is there like a separate, like a lighting pole? Do you recall? Because we have all lighting fixtures, including building and pole mounted lighting fixtures. So I, I, let me grab the plans real quick. I'm pretty sure that it's like, when we say a pole, it's like a little bit of a pole that's right next to the equipment platform. But it's not mounted on the, on the not buildings, but it's not mounted on the equipment. If, uh, it's in the equipment I area, but not actual... on the equipment enclosure. Well, there's not actually an enclosure here, I don't believe. We're not proposing an actual structure. Uh, we're, we're now proposing a concrete pad with equipment thereon that's basically refrigerator sized. So there may be like a pole next to the equipment where a light is attached to the pole. It, it was like one, wasn't it? Or were there more than one? What, lighting? Yeah. Yeah, it's one light. So I'm not sure if you still have the plans, but basically what we have is we have a proposed 30-watt uh, floodlight Lumicon mounted on an H-frame. So what the H-frame is is that we'll have some of the equipment cabinets will be mounted to that. So it's it's technically like a pole, I would call it, but it's we're talking about like six feet above the ground. So it's it's basically they have an H-frame that will have the equipment cabinets will be mounted to that H-frame. They'll also have like the telco boxes will be there. They use that same support structure to put the the work light on. So proposed action includes maybe we just say one light fixture. Correct. I would I would even uh, clarify it to be one maintenance light fixture, um, so that it's known that it's not you know. Um, it's not accent lighting, it's not for aesthetics. This is really just a maintenance light that's only gonna be used in low light conditions when in technicians on site. And as we stated before, technicians are generally on site once a month. Um, it's not often that they're there during the low light conditions unless there's an emergency that requires them to be there. This light may never go on. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that's there because we need to make sure technician has a safe work environment, but it's, it's really they're just there for safety purposes. I think yeah, I'd just like exactly. to also add no lights are proposed for the pole, like be very explicit. Right. Yeah, there's no lights proposed on the tower at all. 
and we have uh, FAA lighting determination that confirms that, so there's no requirement to light the tower for any FAA purposes. And, and that would be the only time we would ever put a light on the tower. We want this stealth design disco ball. We can do that. What are those called the the FAA lights? Um, no. It's it's no hazard to air navigation is really the report. <laughs> the light itself is an FAA strobe light, an FAA light. Um, it's really it's like a red blinking light, but. Um, the determination is, is what they usually state if there's no light required, is they determine the structure is not a hazard to air navigation. Um, really meaning we're just not tall enough. Aircraft warning light? I'll just put FAA strobe lighting is not required. No lights are proposed to be mounted to the tower. The FAA has reviewed the tower and FAA strobe lighting is not required. Um, also, where you have the sentence before, a couple before that, where it says all lighting fixtures, including, I, I changed that to read, the lighting fixture will be fully shielded. And then, I can't quite read what your language said. I had, no lights are proposed to be mounted on the tower. The FAA has reviewed the tower and determined the structure is not a hazard to air navigation and, require, and no FAA strobe lighting is required. Does that sound right? That sounds technically good. Technically, a strobe light. No. Or no, or no FAA lighting is required. Made this call FAA lighting. I know because um, we're reviewing one in Montgomery, and it wasn't required by the FAA, but the planning board is requiring one, and it is referred to as a strobe light. But they're very close to Stewart Airport, and there's some other things going on, helicopters, other things in that area, so they actually prefer to have the light. Generally, we're usually hearing the opposite. It's We don't ever want to light on top of the tower unless the FAA is demanded that one be there, but I can see that in a situation where you are closer to an airport, you know, you may want to have, you know, safety be the... Or even near farms sometimes, they do light the... Well, they, that's it too. They have yeah. farms, plus they have the Orange County Airport is but, within the town. So with all that going on, they were like, eh, let's put one up. Makes sense. Usually if we're close to an airport, we'll have the FAA determination. That situation you mentioned usually only comes up when it's smaller, unregulated airports, usually for like crop dusting and stuff. Fortunately, we have none of that here. Yeah, and I'm not sure what um, time difference would be the difference. I don't know. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't have to find that out. I don't go to the club anymore. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? Everybody good? All right, would someone please make a motion that we approve the negative declaration for Homeland Towers LLC and Verizon Wireless Telecommunications Facility um, and issue a negative declaration subject to the revisions we discussed this evening? I'll move. May I have a second? Second. Noreen? Excuse me. Aye. 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 Robert Garza. Aye. Aye. Very much. You're very welcome. Um, just a little uh, point of order. So we're before the zoning board on the 25th, but before we're back before this board, we do owe you a submission. We have to update our plans. So I just wanted to let you know our goal right now is to get that in so we could be at the June 20th meeting, if not earlier. Um, but if it comes that we're running foul of that June 20th deadline, I'll be in contact with Ashley so we can extend that shot clock if there's a need to. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good have night. Not going to join. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, he was in my office this morning, this afternoon. All right, I will. Thanks.
I, I need to take a five minute break. Okay. <laughs> the stopwatch, huh? <laughs> so I'll bring this up so you can at least read the first page. Ugh, I gotta stretch. Oh, look, Bob went and got a snack. Happy to share. Tired. Yeah, the guy is horrible. I thought you found something. Should I be checking the date yeah. on these? I check the date on everything you take out of that machine. Four days left. I can eat them.
What's not going over there anymore, right? I mean, the orchard popped their head in. Go, oh, George. Okay. All right. So next item on the agenda is Pilati Village. Uh, we have a recommendation letter to be sent to the town board. Uh, we discussed this at our past Thursday meeting and this is just memorializing what we discussed. Um, and Ashley had put this together for us and it touches upon all the referral items with regard to the CCR floating zone. So I'll scroll through this. Good, so we talked about Blythea Lake. Um, bottom of two, planning board notes that the wetland and buffer encroachments are due to the petitioner's use of existing impervious surfaces on the property in adapting the site for the proposed development. I'm wondering if we could slightly reword this that says those impervious surface areas that are being used are already in the 100 foot buffer. Use of existing impervious surface. within the developed portion of the site are already in the buff, are presently in the buffer. <coughs> Something to that effect. Do you have any additional? Let me know if I'm going too fast. Like anything? Oh, you're good. Good. Matt? Uh, no comments. At the end of that sentence, um, which impervious surfaces are presently within the wetland buffer? And then just note the little typo in, in note one on page one. All right. So with that, I will make a motion that we have Ashley finalized this letter um, as amended uh, to be sent to the town board with regard to the proposed conservation cluster residential floating zone for Pilati Village. May I have a second? Second. Noreen? Bob Garstag? Aye. Pat Shea? Aye. Bonnie Franson? Aye. Jeff Manson? Aye. Nick Napoli? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. We are going to skip over minutes for this evening. Um, and I'd like- um, Can I just ask a sure. question in regard to the Pilati application now? Yes. So, so now that this is going off with our recommendations, it's coming out of our hands, it's going to the town board. They'll decide if they're gonna land the CCR zone, they'll finalize the master development plan. But at some point, it, 
assuming all that happens, it would come back to us then for site plan approval, at which point, what would be left for us to do? Considering everything we did through the course of the seeker review. I think we just have, we have to formally finalize the site plan, make whatever edits are needed, and then approve, approve the site plan for filing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. I didn't uh, hear who did second. Second. Pat seconded. Third. <laughs> Fourth. <laughs> Fifth. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned.